Welcome back to the Real Femme Sapien YouTube channel where I give cultural commentary and today I am going to talk about why I am leaving the red pill but it's not going to be the take that you normally expect from a woman. Nobody did me dirty. There's no drama. I wasn't taken advantage of. I wasn't a wounded feminist. <laughs> Girl is the nastiest skank bitch I've ever met. Do not trust her. She is a fugly slut. It just has simply run its course. So if you like this content, make sure you give it a big thumbs up, subscribe down below and hit the notification bell. The lighting situation's a little bit off, but I am traveling, so we are working with what I got. But yes, I am for the most part pretty much done with the red pill. I have learned about everything that I can learn from it. And I don't really take too much issue with content creators per se. I take more issue with content consumers and the demographic of men that the red pill attracts or also at times the demographic of women that the red pill attracts. So the red pill is supposed to be a praxeology, which basically is a mental model that says there are reasons why people make certain choices and there are reasons why people choose to sleep with so-and-so and choose not to sleep with so-and-so. There are reasons why people choose to take advantage of one person and there are reasons why people choose not to take advantage of another person. In general, it is about what men and women find attractive on average. And I think that is so helpful I also think that it's very sad that it's groundbreaking that men have to be told how to snap out of the matrix and be reminded that women do like masculine, confident, stoic, kind men. I don't mean nice guys. I just mean for a long-term relationship, women probably want a guy that is capable of kindness. I do think that brutish men are attractive do not get me wrong but i don't want him clubbing my baby over the head he picking up what i'm putting down so i do think that women have that little tendency to try to tame the alpha i'll say that but i think it provides really good talking points for men to reconsider what they've been told about women because so far men are being told by this gynocentric social order that places women above men in pretty much every area of life at this point they're being told that in order to get a female mate to just be nice and be yourself. That is not true. And there's reasons why women want to hook up with some guy uncontrollably. And then there's reasons why, well, he would make a good husband and a father. Optimally, it would be that a woman could get both of those qualities in one guy, but that is statistically a very hard thing to do, especially in a culture of feminized men. So I don't have a problem with what the content creators are doing. I think they're trying to address a masculinity crisis, and I think that it is a pretty interesting phenomenon to see the manosphere grow from the past 20 years. I'm 27, so I don't know everything about it, but it is interesting that it's been around that long and it does appear to be men trying to help other men by exchanging notes. I mean, before, if you struck out with women, you just had to guess. Now, if you strike out with women, you can go online, do a couple of searches, watch a couple of channels and figure out, oh, okay, well, it looks like I've been too subservient to women or, oh, okay, it looks like I'm obese and I'm pretty much a fool trying to get a woman out here looking like that and that's helpful yes somebody's got to tell the delusional westerners that being broke and obese as a man is probably not the best way to get a woman much less get a wife but honestly i think most men are losing these days when they get married i also think that in the west we have a culture of victims and that's mostly why i'm choosing to walk away although i am going to continue to use certain terminologies and certain concepts and things like that because I think what they have to say about polarity is true about femininity and masculinity. I think it's very surface level information. I think masculinity and femininity is a very spiritual thing. I think Westerners don't know much about it compared to the East. But with this culture of victims, 
If you're a man who is striking out with women, you're going to try to find something to blame, someone to blame. That's what Americans do. Well, if you do something bad to me, I'm just going to see you in court. <laughs> We have a culture that wants to find the oppressor and the victim, and even men will look to make themselves the victim. It's the same way that women will. If you, as a man, just go out every day and you don't get a woman, and you just come out and you say, well, it's obvious the women are the problem. They clearly just can't see me for who I am. That shows a real lack of accountability and self-awareness. There's reasons why you're striking out with women, and is it the women's fault just because they don't say yes? So like we should lower our standards. Granted, I will say that your average woman is very delusional and thinks that she deserves more than what she can actually pull. And to those women, I'm sure life will humble them. They certainly will not get a wholesome Chad. You guys can argue in the comment section if you think wholesome Chads exist, but all of the stay at home wives I know that are feminine are married to wholesome Chads. <laughs> guys with options who chose that woman and that family whatever and so i find that behavior to be an easy out if everyone else is the problem and i'm not the problem then i don't have to change it's the same thing with feminists feminists don't think that there's any reason why a man wouldn't want to be with a combative woman who doesn't care for her looks, who will readily terminate the life of a pregnancy, who doesn't want to get married, but maybe she'll get married when she's 35, when she really needs you, when she's burned out with her career. Also, they don't think that it's possible that men are not attracted to women that are always going to put them second to their job. Because let's be real, most women don't have careers. Most women are not making over six figures. Like most people are making over six figures. So feminists, instead of addressing the fact that they are about as feminine as a bag of rocks, they will instead blame men. Men are the problem. Men are trash. This is the patriarchy. I can't get paid more because of the men. It has nothing to do with my work ethic. It has nothing to do with my talent or the fact that I'm lazy. It's the men. It's the men. And that's how I feel about the manosphere side of things when men are coming out and saying, it's the women. It's the women. To me, it's just a victim mentality and needs to be over and done with. I do like to give people grace. And when we look at those out there who are incapable of solving their own life problems, we often think that it is a mentality. And at times it is, but what gets neglected is an IQ problem. If you have a low IQ, it is very unlikely that you're gonna be able to solve your own problems. The number one marker of somebody with an above average IQ is that they can solve their problems. They identify the problem, theorize solutions, they implement solutions, they get feedback, they change things until they get the outcome that they desire. But you have to have a certain level of intelligence for that. And that's one reason why I'm grateful for the Manosphere because I do think we have a crisis of masculinity and I don't think that for women, I think average men are losing. And so like, yeah, don't man up for women, man up for yourself, man up for yourself before you get got by the world is mostly my perspective because <laughs> I'm telling you, the world will run up on you if you don't stand up to it and say no. That's for men and it's for women, but I think particularly men are under attack. I can see it pretty much everywhere. In reality, we wouldn't need the manosphere if we had masculine fathers in the home that young men could go to about their struggles with women or their struggles with professionalism. They would be able to get that feedback and move forward, but we really lack father figures right now in the West, and so these men are resorting to finding answers to their problems online, and so I think that's important. So for the men of the intelligence and ability to change their circumstances, yes, I do think that the manosphere is helpful. And also with men that have that level of intelligence about them, they're able to exercise discernment and they can see what's a generalized statement and when their relationships with women have individual factors. Because you can get a broad generalized statement from the manosphere, which is important. There's things that you should know. Yes, women are likely to leave you if you go broke or if she gets a promotion. I think those statistics are helpful to know. That way you can work around them. But there's going to be individual things. Like, Do you really think that the day to make a woman submit to your frame, which is a problem in itself, because if you were masculine, we just want to be under your frame anyway. But do you think that the time to make a woman submit to your frame is on her birthday? Say, like let's be reasonable here so those men with that level of intelligence are able to exercise discernment so i'm all about the manosphere 
However, they also attract low IQ males, but that is every sector, every niche of any movement, any ideology, any praxeology, any niche on YouTube. I am not saying that the manosphere is an ideology. First and foremost, I do not think it's an ideology. If you decide to make it one yourself as a content consumer, you really need to get some help. <laughs> But that's something that the Manosphere can't prevent. They can't go to you and say, hey, you don't get access to all of these notes that we've been exchanging because you're just not smart enough. They're very welcoming and accommodating to men of all walks of life. And hopefully the ones that show up that want to change to get the tools to change. I don't even have a problem with the fact that some of these content creators sell courses or coaching sessions because these are autonomous males. They're not being taken advantage of. They're allowing themselves to spend their money on things that they're not going to use. I talked to some of these content creators behind the scenes. Majority of the time, their clients don't want to do the work. And that even happens for myself. I've priced myself at a point to where hopefully the women that choose to spend their time with me, that is an hour long, and I give them feedback on some of the circumstances of their life, that they are invested in it. But still, even sometimes at that price, it doesn't happen. I would love to do it for free, but people don't value things that are done for free. But these men will spend hundreds and think that it's gonna get them the woman, it's gonna get them the body, when in reality, they need to go and they need to practice in the real world. But any Manosphere content creator that is worth his weight will say that. They will say, yes, I offer these things. Most people don't act on it because I don't think it's a waste to invest in yourself. I don't think it's a waste to learn how to use crypto. It's not a waste to learn how to work out. It's not a waste to learn day game. It's only a waste if you, the consumer, pay and do nothing with it. And that's a common phenomenon. We have a consumerist culture. So do I think the manosphere takes advantage of men? No. No, the same way that I don't think women are being necessarily taken advantage of by feminism. They're choosing to believe these lies. They're choosing to pay for things that they know darn well they're not committed to. And so what do we say? Oh, oh, well, these poor men, they need to be coddled. No, these are adults. Let them learn how to try and fail on their own because no one else is going to teach them. So for the most part, I don't have a problem with the content creators. I know their main demographic is men. I think they serve a good, useful purpose. I think that the church is not ready to address masculinity at all. And the day that that happens, then maybe I'll come out and say something about it because I do firmly believe in my heart, reading scripture, that God wants men to be men. I firmly believe that. I don't think we have a society that facilitates that. I don't think that we have a church that facilitates that either. At least the manosphere is bringing the topic up. At least they're trying to say, hey men, we see what's going on with you. It is a problem. Maybe these are some things that you can try and I'm all here for that. So for me, it's run its course. I've learned all I can learn. I got the man that I wanted. I have for the most part, the physique that I want. I have the outlook and trajectory on my life that I want. I've gotten a lot of help from some of these content creators behind the scenes in launching the platform and I am forever grateful. And I am grateful for the Manosphere. I am just not here for the victims and the gloom and the doom and there's no good women. There's none of this and there's none of that oh boo -hoo. let me play a sad song for you on the world's smallest violin this is serious i know this really is the world's smallest violin see when i literally sit here i make this platform try to find as many decent wives as i can to show you guys these women exist they're out here this is what they're looking for just to say mm, eh, no no eh, eh. and i've truly gone out of my way to do this I do this on purpose. I believe in the nuclear family and I want to bring it back. And I think one of the biggest forms of insurance for the nuclear family is a masculine man and a feminine woman. I don't think this progressive stuff is working. If progressivism was so liberating, wouldn't marriage rates be better? Wouldn't there be intact families? Wouldn't our society just be on a an upward trajectory if it was effective they're solving all of these injustices and so surely families can thrive once all of these injustices are solved. They're, they're not thriving, okay? They're not thriving. I don't think progressivism is the answer to any of this stuff. And I'm in a very different phase of my life. I am working to be still more feminine and also I'm looking to be more of a homemaker. I wanna learn how to cook more. I wanna learn how to please my husband more. I realize that is a bad word to say out loud these days, but that is where I'm at. And so there's not much 
that the red pill can offer me. I'm not going to take my old videos down. It's good to watch somebody work through the process. And if you're at the beginning of the red pill, because it goes in a cycle. So if you're just now entering and you're coming across my content that covers that subject, more power to you. Good for you. Good for you. I think that it is helpful to see just how much the world caters to women and how we can't have a just society that doesn't base superiority on marriage. There's nothing superior about being born a woman. You can't control that. Yet we have a world that will tell you that you're all that. But then for men, they're pretty much admonished for even having standards. And I like to know these things as a woman so that I can see the world that my future sons and daughters are going to be in and to let them know when something is morally corrupt and how to work around that or push back against it. So I hope that was helpful. I hope that hit home for some of you and I will see you next time. Bye.